very much. Thank you very much. I am so sorry. Here's what they wanted to do. Die Mütze. We got so tied up and I figured you wouldn't mind too much because we're trying to win. And I got interviewed by actually a great guy. I didn't know him too well, but I got to know him because it was the longest interview I've ever done in my life. Joe Rogan, a good guy. And it's, uh, you know, it's quite something. And we had some other things really important. And I said, you know, we're going to get this stuff done. And my people came to me, sir, we could cancel our evening event. I'm sure the people wouldn't mind. I said, are you crazy? I'm not canceling. There's no way. I'm not canceling. There's no way. We never even... So I apologize, but you know, it's all about winning. We got to win, and uh, we did some things today that will help us win. I think we did a lot of taping, a lot of this, a lot of that, a lot of everything, and we're way up. I'm not supposed to say that, but we're way up. Schliebing. Not only the polls, but the early voting. I guess we're leading in all seven swing states. But, okay, forget I said it. Forget it. Because everybody has to go out and vote. Who's voted so far? Who's going to vote? I always forget. You like to vote a little bit late. This party just likes to vote a little bit late, and that's okay. I understood it. I never went crazy over the one or the other, but we're leading, actually, in places where traditionally the Republicans don't lead. In fact, they can go down 30 And then they catch him at the end, right? But a little scary, a little spooky. But uh, we're leading in just about every one, right? Just about every one. And uh, it's usually they lead, and then we catch them, and then in our case, we usually beat them. We did great in 2016. We did much better in 2020, but, you know, a lot of bad things happened there. But this one, uh, this one blows it away because we've never had enthusiasm like this. And part of the mm -hmm. reason is... They're so bad. Yeah. You got a little dose of bad management. You got a little dose of incompetent people. You know where she is tonight? She's out partying. So Israel is attacking. We got a war going on, and she's out partying. At least we're working to make America great again. That's what we're doing. Kamala. Rogers. Er ist der Beste. Das hier gucken wir auch noch. Das hier gucken wir auch noch. Das hat mir der Hagen geschickt. Der meinte, das wäre geisteskrankeste Rotfunkpropaganda. Und das will schon was heißen. Jam Friends. Wie gut seid ihr drauf? Ich kriege Gänsehaut. Ihr wisst ja, die meisten wissen, wie lange ich das hier schon mache. Auch mit Trump. Alle Höhen, alle Tiefen. Gestern waren äh, Frank Vorbild bei mir und Steinbra und wir haben auch noch eine öffentliche Folge aufgenommen. Da besprechen wir natürlich ausführlich auch das Joe Rogan Interview oder den Podcast, das Gespräch. Das hier war jetzt direkt danach, was wir jetzt gerade geguckt haben. Da hatte er noch eine Rallye, davor hatte er noch eine Rallye. Welcher 80-jährige Typ hat irgendjemanden 18-jährigen, äh 18-jährigen, 80-jährigen Vater oder Opa oder so? Oder Onkel oder sowas? Könnt ihr euch vorstellen, dass der so ein Schedule hat? Er hat das gemacht dass wir jetzt hier sind. Klar, Elon hat Ex gekauft, aber dass er niemals aufgegeben hat, dass er einfach unbreakable war, unstoppable, dass wir jetzt hier sind mit diesem Selbstbewusstsein und mit dieser Mentalität, diese Zero Fucks Given und dieses Niemals Aufgeben und Overcome, für mich ist er die Symbolfigur davon. Er will gewinnen. Und wenn es ihn alles kostet und wenn sie ihn ins Gefängnis stecken und wenn er komplett untergeht, es hätte so oft auch schief gehen können. Der hätte wirklich, sie versuchen ja jetzt noch das mit dem Hitler-Nazi-Psychose. Es kann keiner mehr hören, keiner will es mehr hören, aber sie hören einfach nicht auf. Und sie waren in den letzten acht bis neun Jahren bereit, alles mit ihm zu machen. Und allen, die sich irgendwie was getraut haben, er war derjenige, der nie aufgegeben hat. Niemals, niemals. Der war nie blackpilled. Nie. Dieser Mann ist 
ein ganz besonderer Mensch. Ich kann es nicht anders sagen. Ihr wisst das ja, ich sage es auch jede Woche und jeden Tag. Wir gehen auf die letzte Woche jetzt zu, beziehungsweise wir gehen rein in die letzte Woche vor der Wahl. Wenn die die Wahl, auf, wie auch immer, noch geklaut kriegen oder ihn original abknallen oder sowas, dann weiß ich nicht mehr. Dann weiß ich es nicht mehr. So wie der ganze Vibe ist, egal wo man hinguckt. Klar, die klammern sich noch an ihr Trump-Derangement-Syndrom, hören auch einfach nicht auf damit. Die haben nur noch diese Schallplatte, die die auflegen können. Ich habe auch heute Morgen schon wieder gelesen, ja, er ist dement und ist irrer denn je. Aber jeder, der noch einigermaßen normal tagt, einigermaßen was spürt, der jetzt nicht ein Rotfunk-Zombie ist, egal wo man hinguckt, er ist es. Egal wo man hinguckt, auch Mainstream. Und mit Mainstream meine ich neue Medien. Neue Plattformen, YouTube und all diese Sachen. Legacy Media und Legacy Entertainment Betrieb, ich sage das auch alles in der öffentlichen Folge, deren Zeit ist so krass abgelaufen und die Joe Rogan Folge war für mich der Zenit, war für mich der Paradigmenwechsel. Die hat einfach gezeigt, was die ganze Zeit schon im Gange war. Legacy Media, der alte Medienadel, it's over. It's over. Du kannst mit Beyoncé und CNN und Rotfunk nichts mehr reißen. Und mit gestellter Scheiße und mit Lügen, es geht nicht. Ein Mann musste durchziehen, das war er. Ja, wir haben ja alle durchgezogen. Auch ein Elon, das war, ist der zweite Mann, wie sie auch sagen, Staatsfeind Nummer zwei. Wenn hier und da ein paar starke Männer nicht einknicken, sich nicht unterwerfen, egal was war, es hat so viele Momente gegeben in den letzten acht, neun Jahren, wo jeder andere gesagt hätte, komm, lass, lass gut sein. Das geht nicht gut aus. Und jetzt auch ein Elon seit ein paar Jahren. Und diese Männer haben einfach nie einen Schritt zurück gemacht, sich nie unterworfen, sich nie entschuldigt. Deswegen sind wir hier, ich bin da felsenfest von überzeugt. Ja, Trump, das ist für mich Peak Alpha Male. Dieses niemals eine Niederlage auch akzeptieren. Nicht sich ficken zu lassen. Wenn alle gegen dich sind, alle, und du weißt aber, du hast recht, du weißt es. Nicht, weil du ein Psychopath bist, nicht, weil du keine gute Selbsteinschätzung hast, sondern du siehst die Matrix, du siehst alle um dich herum lügen. Du weißt, du spinnst nicht und du unterwirfst dich dem nicht. Koste es, was es wolle. Und wenn es deine dein ganzes Leben kostet. Es war halt die Rally Madison Square Garden. Es gab im Vorfeld schon diese... Proteste der Mainstream-Medien, der Lügenpresse, weil es war ja so, pass auf, jetzt zieht euch diese Geisteskrankheit rein des Rotfunks und der Lügenpresse. Ich habe es eben schon mal angedeutet, also ihr dürft ja nicht vergessen, irgendwann in den 30er Jahren haben die Nazis, die amerikanischen Nazis, da gab es dann auch irgendwelche Deutschen, die haben dann da ein bisschen NSDAP gemacht, die haben eine Rallye im Madison Square Garden gemacht. Das ist der Beweis. Er ist literarisch Hitler. Jeder, der im Madison Square Garden eine Veranstaltung hat, ist Hitler. Zieht euch das rein. Ich lasse es durchlaufen. Es ist die geisteskrankeste Trump Derangement Syndrom, Nazi Psychose da draußen. But that jamboree happening right now, you see it there on your screen, in that place is particularly chilling. Because in 1939, more than 20,000... Ist das zu fassen? Könnt ihr das glauben? Wie man so ehrenlos sein kann? Supporters of a different fascist leader, Adolf... A different fascist leader. Hitler packed the garden for a so-called pro-America rally. A rally where speakers voiced anti-Semitic rhetoric from a stage draped with Nazi banners. When a Jewish protester rushed the stage, the Associated Press reported, quote, instantly, a dozen or more stormtroopers set upon him, knocking him down and beating him as he held his head in his arms. Most of his clothing was torn from his body. Later, he was booked for disorderly conduct. That's unglaublich. Now, against that backdrop of history, Donald Trump, The man who has threatened to use the military against opponents, he calls... Es ist nicht zu glauben. Ich kann es wirklich gar nicht glauben. Ja, da sieht man es. Wir haben wieder Hitler. Enemies from within, who has threatened to use, use the troops to quell what he says are lawless cities and to use those troops to carry out mass deportations of immigrants. 
is once again turning Madison Square Garden into a staging ground for once extremism. Again. Das ist wirklich, kannst du nur noch Laugh React machen. Es ist wirklich unglaublich. Aber zieht euch diese Rally rein. Tucker kommt auf die Bühne. And gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Tucker Carlson. Ich habe das selber noch nicht gesehen. Soll aber geil sein. Freunde, RFK, Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, wir haben richtig krasse Schwurbler am Start, die richtig, richtig krassen Fringe-Content machen. Der hatte vor drei Wochen noch Murder Made bei sich in der Talkshow. Das sind spirituell wir. Thank you. Ah. Uh, I <laughs> I saw the Grateful Dead in this arena in 1987. I was seated right there. How weird. It's it's so it's such an honor to be here and it's wild. Just another day following Bobby Kennedy Jr. at a Donald Trump rally in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I mean, what? Echt. That's totally normal. Liz Cheney's out there <laughs> with Kamala Harris. And there's Bobby Kennedy calling to protect women's sports at a Trump rally. It's a realignment. It's unbelievable. And it, the fact that it's here is even sweeter. Imagine if you're, and just pause for one moment. Imagine you're Donald Trump. You're from New York City. You become famous in New York City. You make your fortune in New York City. And all of a sudden, the leadership of New York City decides they're going to destroy you because they don't like your politics. And so they, yeah, boo. Imagine if that were you, though. And they try and take everything that you have, they try and put you in prison, they try and put your children in prison. If that happened to you, how often do you think you'd be going back to New York City? Yeah. How about never? And yet he's here, it's like getting thrown out of a bar. And you think to yourself, well, you know, all my friends are in the bar. <laughs> and you approach the door and there's the bouncer, like, you're not allowed in here. But from behind the bouncer, you hear the cheers of your friend, come on in! And the bouncer hangs his head in shame. Ugh. Okay. He's embarrassed that he's working for the man trying to keep the most popular person out of the bar. And that's Donald Trump back in the city that produced him with no embarrassment at all in a room full of his friends. The stones that takes, the bravery that takes mm -hmm. is incredible. Donald Trump's going to win. Yeah. He's going to win. Yeah. I know that that's true. Why is all. Donald Trump going to win? The people he's about to defeat have no idea. And they're panicked. They have no idea why people like Donald Trump. And they're first das finde ich auch so krass, dass sie das immer noch nicht verstanden haben. Sie haben nicht verstanden, warum die Menschen ihn lieben. Sie raffen es gar nicht. Sie sind clueless. Sie hätten es damals schon raffen können. Und da habe ich schon jahrelang gesagt, wie sie es einfach nicht raffen. Und jetzt sind wir hier und sie sind immer noch ahnungslos. The first theory was, well, Donald Trump is evil, so half the country is evil also. And that's one of the reasons they spent the last four years trying to destroy the country, because they're mad at its voters for liking Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. How much easier would it have been just to pause for 20 minutes and ask yourself honestly in some silent place, why do people like Donald Trump? And if they had been honest enough to ask themselves that question, they would have come up with the two main reasons, and here what they, here's what they are. The first reason that people like Donald Trump is because he likes them. That's why. And it's real. Affection is something you can't fake. I don't care how many times Kamala mm -hmm. Harris would tell me she loves me, I don't believe her. I saw her kiss her husband with a mask on. A mask on. That's her version of love. It's fake, it's not real. They spent 10 years telling you Trump is a hater. Do you feel that on him? No, you don't. Because it's not there. I've spent a lot of time with Trump. And there's not one moment I've ever been with him off camera where he's spending his time grousing about people he hates, ever. He's talking about the people and the country he loves in his private time, trust me. And people know in a country that has been taken over by a leadership class that actually despises them and their values and their history and their culture and their customs really hates them to the point that it's trying to replace them. They know someone who actually has affection for them and that's Donald Trump. The great replacement. And it's requited. Aber ihr müsst auch Kinder kriegen, sonst werdet ihr replaced. It's requited, they know. When he goes to McDonald's and serves fries, like, he's not faking that at all. That's why that worked. 
Democratic media consultants are like, how, how is that working? Because it's real, that's why. And the second reason that people love Trump, and I put myself in this category, it's why I'm here today, is because he's liberated us in the deepest and truest sense. And the liberation he has brought to us is the liberation from the obligation to tell lies. Yeah. Donald Trump has made it possible for the rest of us to tell the truth about mm -hmm. the world around us. Yeah. And that's the single most liberating thing you can do for people. If you want to enslave people, if you want to degrade them, force them to tell lies. And they have. They force us to lie about everything at gunpoint, effectively. Mm -hmm. They put people in prison for refusing to lie. And not just the obvious lies that men can become women or Vladimir Putin blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. No, honestly, he did. January 6th was an insurrection. They were unarmed, but it was very insurrectiony. Not even the obvious ones, but the big lie. You know what the big lie is? The big lie is that they're impressive. That's what the big lie is. That the people in charge have somehow earned the right to rule over you, and they haven't. And you know that. Mm -hmm. These are the single most useless people in the United States. Wow, Gänsehaut. Es ist immer noch Amerika. They have no skills whatsoever. They've got three quarters of the money, and they didn't earn it. They set up a system precisely for the purpose of awarding themselves wealth and power when it's undeserved. You look at Liz Cheney and you ask yourself honestly, what skill could she possibly have that allowed her to send hundreds of thousands of people to their deaths? Did she earn that? I don't think she did. No fair system would make Liz Cheney powerful. No fair system would make Larry Fink rich. No fair system would elevate someone like Kamala Harris to a presidential nomination. She's never been accused of doing anything useful. She has precisely no achievement. She's a nominee without getting a single vote. Er ist polemisch, er ist auf den Punkt, er ist leidenschaftlich, er ist auch furchtlos. Das fand ich auch immer geil an ihm. She is a metaphor for the system they created to make themselves rich and powerful. And then they have the goal to lecture you, the people who can actually change a flat tire and repair a power grid, who have useful jobs, who pay your taxes and work 40 hours a week, lecture you that you are somehow immoral. And Donald Trump has empowered the rest of us through mostly just sticking around in the face of their mm -hmm. hate and abuse and persecution. Genau. He has given the rest of us the right to call BS on the charade. No, you are not better than us. No, you are not smarter than us. No, you do not deserve what you have. You probably stole it. No, you're not going to bully me into silence anymore. Yes. And I can promise you at this point, nine days out, when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Elon Musk and Tulsi Gabbard and pretty much every high school senior and college shorty girl in the country has yes. come out finally say, yeah, I am for Donald Trump, actually. Yes. When the entire country has realized there is nothing embarrassing about this, what's embarrassing is to take a perfectly great country and destroy it, as mm -hmm. they have, Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed. You should be. At that moment, it's going to be pretty tough for them, 10 days from now, to look in the eye to America with a straight face. It's going to be pretty hard to look at us and say, you know what? Kamala Harris, she's just, she got 85 million votes because she's just so impressive. As the first Samoan, Malaysian, low IQ, former California prosecutor ever to be elected president, it was just a groundswell of popular support. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just a freak or a criminal. At this stage of the game, after nine years of listening to their lies and finding every single one of them totally false, no, it's not safe and effective, and no, she's not impressive. It's very hard for me to believe the rest of us are going to say, you know what, Joe Scarborough, you're right. You're right. She won fair and square because she's just so impressive. I don't think so. And to me, that is liberation. It's the freedom to say what's obviously true as a free man and not a slave. And I just want to say thank you, Donald Trump, for that. Die Wahrheit sagen, wenn man sie sieht. Kein Orwell, kein des Kaisers neue Kleider. Different fascist leader, Adolf Hitler. Yo, komm, das gucken wir auch noch gerade. J.D. Vance, Elon schreibt, A lot of people still believe the Trump-Russia hoax and have no idea that the Steele dossier was a scam funded by Hillary's campaign. Das ist doch auch krass. Ich wette, kannst du auch jeden allmann normi fragen. Sie wissen es auch nicht. Steel Dossier war ja das, wo es hieß, ja, er hat irgendwie beim Obama zwei Noten aufs Bett pissen lassen und so weiter. Ne? Das ist alles von der Clinton Crime Family inszeniert gewesen. Russia Hoax, Russian Collusion, während sie gleichzeitig selber Election Meddling gemacht haben. Deep State, Big Tech, Election Fraud. Von langer Hand geplant. Ask yourself a basic question about network integrity. You guys talked about the Russia hoax nonstop. The FBI was investigating talked, it. You, 
Es ist CNN übrigens. Sieht man hinter mir. Da. Clinton News Network. The CIA was investigating it. Brille. The CIA was investigating it. We, so, we, so we recovered them. And so you took the words of unnamed FBI agents and put them on your network as if they were the gospel truth. You did it again and again. A viewer of your network would have believed that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin conspired in 2016. No. That was totally and preposterously was? false. No. Well, that's what you just said why. is false. Bitte? We covered an FBI investigation. I don't know why you want to talk about the FBI investigation. You covered it in a way that gave credence yes. to anonymous sources. Ist das krass? Die setzen sich einfach dahin jetzt und sagen, das stimmt nicht. Haben wir nicht gemacht? Das ist doch wirklich geisteskrankes Gaslighting. J.D. Vance sehr gut auch. Verbal, sehr eloquent, auf den Punkt, da sitzt jedes Wort, jeder Satz, bin ich beeindruckt von, auch in den Podcasts mit Theo Vaughn und mit Tim Dillon. Organizations, you did it yourself, your network did it, Jake. But again, can we talk about the issues that Americans care I'm most about? I'm talking about things that Donald Trump has said. Yes. If you have an, an issue Kamala with Harris. whether or not he's talking about the economy enough, that's between you and your running mate. I'm talking about things he has said this week every single rally that he does he talks about how he wants to unleash american energy so we can lo lower the cost of groceries he talks about the fact that housing has become unaffordable he talks about the wide open border jake kamala harris and her allies you know it's interesting kamala harris and her media allies and i would put cnn in this category you guys they would you guys seem I'll, to tell, care. i'll tell you that they would well they should watch your network more because you guys seem to care more about donald trump's past in the future of the American people. We're running this campaign on making of the American dream. I'm specifically affordable. asking about how Donald Trump is going to be president in the future should he win. And then we're being told we're going to pursue economic policies that lower the cost of groceries mm -hmm. and make life more affordable again. He talks about it every single day on the campaign trail. And so do I. What you're talking about is is a, an anonymously sourced story or one guy Nothing who anonymously is, or who Zero one guy cent. one guy who is a disgruntled employee I told where five ten, other ten people, people five ten other people. people pushed back against him and said that what he said was dishonest so why don't we talk about the policy that's affecting american citizens and not what donald trump allegedly said according to one guy who's pissed off because he got fired by donald trump lügenpresse wirklich ekelhafteste lügenpressen brille alter ich glaube, das waren so die Highlights. Ja, der Rest ist nur noch Gravy. Der Rest ist nur noch Fun. Gucken wir gleich. Zur Verabschiedung gebe ich euch die ganzen Fun-Videos. <lacht> <lacht>